Okay. Welcome. I need another word for welcome. Bienvenidos. Yeah, there you go. I don't speak Spanish. Apparently our guest does because he grew up in California. I grew up in Philadelphia. I've made the mistake of studying French in high school, uh, which does me a lot of good, but the pockets of French neighborhoods I run into in Southern California. Où est la station? Hey, man, chico de madre. <laughs> Thank you. I wish my mother well. I know no Spanish whatsoever. This guy probably does. Welcome to Enlightened Up. This is the show that is about shifting the consciousness of, I need to say the word consciousness right. We need to, we're trying to shift the world right now. We're in a pile of shift, and I believe we can do this with, through levity and laughter. I have the best comedians that come on here, friends of mine, and this guy's no exception. I, I've loved this guy's work and the person for quite some time, and he knows this already. I consider him one of the top talk show hosts of all time on television. Damn. It was, I've told you that before. Don't act surprised. I only had 11 weeks. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah. I'm honored I was on it. Shit. I was on it. Shoot. I, never, I will Sorry. never forget Chris Spencer's our guest. Chris hosted a show called Vibe in 97, I'd say, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I didn't know it was that short of a time. 11 weeks. What is wrong with them? Did somebody else take the show over? Sinbad, remember? Sinbad. I was on that one, too. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> You're on everybody. You were you. nowhere near. You were magic, he, too, right? Don't give me. Don't start with the magic. Yeah, yeah. I was the co-host on yes, that. I, I was not a guest. Yes. I was the uh, sacrificial lamb. Yes. I was the white guy that they were you thought. Ever, was it you they, or Steve White first? No, oh, I was first. You Although first. he was first, he thought he was first, and he would he would hang out just waiting, <laughs> waiting. just waiting for me to make a <laughs> make a fail. He was like, ah, "It's gonna happen. They're gonna go with oh me." Oh my god! Because they brought me on. It was like a racist decision because right. they thought I would bring in white people. Right. Because it was a mostly urban crowd. Right. Which is code for black. Right. And which is stupid because <laughs> magic is as universal as it gets. Yes, but they they wanted to bring me in for that yes. reason. And when you start with something as inauthentic as that, right. bad recipe. Right. Right. But he, that was not the greatest interviewer or show ever. Yours though no. was. Eh. What the hell happened? Why did they? What was their excuse for canceling you? I mean, ratings, but they, 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 if we are going to talk about that, they put Keenan Ivory Wayans and on Keenan Ivory Wayans and I on. We launched the same date at the <gasps> exact same time. So oh. now there's this underserved audience that is dying for something after our senior. Split in half now. And then now we split in half. Yeah. Wow. And this is just before Magic's show, right? Just before Magic's, yes. Yeah. I went on there and I remember going, man, this Spencer guy, because I really didn't had never heard of you before. I right. mean, this guy, is, he's got chops. He's funny. I think uh, one of my favorite people and writers, uh, Sully McCullough, is of back. Of course. I yeah, think you I know, we were roommates in college. I didn't know. <laughs> no. Yeah, come on. What college? Way, but UCLA. I'm finding all this stuff out. I found out you went to high school with my buddy Chris Hale, who yes. played for USC in Actually, the Buffalo the, the Bills. Actually, the rival high school, he went to Monrovia. Oh, I didn't know that. And they used to stomp us into the dirt. <laughs> Chris Hale was so fast. Right. He was a blur. <laughs> Chris you played Hale against him? Chris Hale is his, uh, you remember on cartoons where they go, pew? That's how fast he was. <laughs> yeah, he played. No, no, I played basketball. He played football. Okay. And he ran track. He was oh, incredible. Uh, yes. And so he, he's a good buddy of mine. So I found out you guys go way back. And yeah. now I had no idea you went back. Your roommates and you actually, did they like team up? Hey, there's a couple comics. I never heard of the comic no, wing. We actually, I've heard we, of the athlete wing, the dorm. No. I've never heard of the comic just, dorm. <laughs> it was ironic. Actually, I started stand up because of Suli. No. We were around a bunch of girls. And they're like, so what do you want to do? He goes, well, I want to be a stand-up comedian. They're like, oh, my God, who do you like? And he's like, Seinfeld and Pryor. And blah, blah, blah. and they were all over him. And they go, what about you? I was like, uh, stand-up comedy? <laughs> Whoa. That's how it started. You, were, you, were, you started with chuckle fuckers. The attention, the attention he got made me go, oh, yeah, I, I need this attention. That is amazing. I, uh, geez, I always, I always didn't get the... Women want a sense of humor stuff. I never got that. You got right. you better have a sense of humor and some game, because right. I didn't have the game or the you know the whole thing. But you're pretty. No, no, I was five one in high school. Yeah. Okay, then you were cute. No. <laughs> <laughs> once you once you're under like five three, right. it's not even cute. No. Yes, that's, you didn't graduate at five that, one. That's sympathy at that at that. You point. didn't graduate high school at five. No, one. no, I didn't. I grew seven inches in one summer, my junior year. Oh yeah. wow, that was like freaky. Yeah. Yes. But so I tried the funny card, but it really didn't work. I didn't wasn't you know I obviously I think the comedians. What, what do you think that comedians have in common? I have I have one in mind. But what do you think if you're gonna label comedians and and tag them with something. What do you think it right, would be? Sense of humor, of course, is not one of them. Right? No, no, um, of course not. No. 
Most of them, except for me, I would say tragedy. <laughs> like, that, I think I would be a better comic if I had more tragedy in my life. Yeah, no kidding, huh? Like, yeah. think about the ones we love. You, you do have the black thing, though. People that are just listening right now, you are black. Yeah, but I mean, that's, not, that's not tragic, is it? Well, it's, you have pain. What I'm saying, there's, a there's pain, pain for the people. I'm just talking about personal pain. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of your favorite comedians have had some trauma. Not Man, Seinfeld. I was just about to say, except for one. Yeah, I would say that too. Jerry yeah. Seinfeld. My, my Which thought, we don't know. We, we don't, don't know. really we know because he know. wouldn't reveal it. We don't know if a rabbi touched his booty when he was a kid <laughs> or nothing. So he's such a good comedian. I don't know if that, a rabbi touched yours, Chris Spencer. I, I have no idea. I, I don't know what a rabbi was till about 27. So <laughs> not mine. Probably not. Not that you knew of. No. I, my thought was that all smart. I wouldn't say they're all smart. Uh, comedians. Clever. If you're going to. You got to be pretty damn smart, intuitive. You have there have to be those oh. qualities. I'm not saying all, but right the great ones definitely I, smart. Yes, I would say it's something. It's so that wasn't working for me in high school. Either. Right. It was athletics, it, you know. Right. But when you were in college, that you were no longer the great athlete. Not at all. You had to switch it up. Yes, <laughs> to the comedy. Yes, when you're getting third place in intramurals. It's like, <laughs> okay, let me, what else can I do? That's pain. I'm going to find pain on no, this I show. No, I definitely have pain, but I don't have the. You know, I didn't grow up in a brothel. You know what I mean? My dad wasn't on crack like Kevin. You know, so when you talk yeah. about some of the greatest comedians of the world, there's some, there's some, there's some stuff to them. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm finding my pain later in life. You know what I mean? Like through marriage, as a, through <laughs> marriage and children. Absolutely. I'm getting, oh, that'll do it. I'm at the top. I, listen, I'm, I've never been this funny until I got married and had kids. I have to tell you, me and my family listened to you the other day on Sirius. Uh -huh. Even my kids said, he doesn't talk much. <laughs> Baby, are you my, listening? My, my kid noticed that Baby, she, she, dominates, she dominates the show. You're the pro. I'm fucking and you Ed barely Mc, get I'm, a word. I'm Ed McMahon. I'm you on the magic show. <laughs> I'm the sidekick. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is my are my kids intuitive or have other people noticing this? Everybody. No. Yeah. It depends on the topic. When they, when we start getting deep, dark, political, that's her world. Mm -hmm. I, I let her. I just let her go. Bro, when I listen, and we listen for a while. <laughs> you, I you I forgot said, I was on the show. Right. I I said to my kids is like bragging. Right. I go. It's up on Sirius XM. I'm going, wow, it's my buddy Chris. And so they're going, oh, great. And they're going, is Chris a female? Because it was only her. And you, then you finally go, yeah. Uh -huh. And that was it. Yeah. And that's, that's how our relationship is, too. <laughs> so every now and then I just say something to let people know I'm not dead. Is it? <laughs> It's true. It's so it says your name there, and I'm. I'm sorry, like I'm, Mike Tyson displayed. in that Barbara Walters interview. Remember with Robin Givens, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's just sitting there like. Yeah, she was. Yes, his honey, his you was dummy. Yeah, I don't I, know if I it's just, that bad for you, but yeah, no. So wait, is this a bone of contention? Do you talk about this? Do you literally? Are you going to go home now? Let's see how honest you are. No, are you no, going to no, say I Craig just, Shoemaker's kids? One of them seven, by the way, honey. Absolutely. <laughs> notice that absolutely. you dominate the conversation. Yes. Absolutely. Why wouldn't I not? <laughs> you are. You're going to say this. Of now course. I'm never going to be on your show. No, you'd be great on our show. I would love it. Me well, and my wife. I, you have couples on. Couples and sometimes. Uh, singles, and then we bring on professionals, doctors, educators. Uh, I'm all of the above. Bingo. Yeah. Okay. Sleep in a separate room these days, you too. So I hours. guess I'm single. Are you in a separate room? Well, yeah, she's got... Um, she snores? No, I'm the snorer. Oh. I'm not only snore, but she's got um, um, menopause, which I believe means... How old is she? Put the man on pause. She looks young. Oh, I know. Everyone says, you will not believe when I tell you how old that woman is right there. She was just here earlier. Wow. And I told some, I told the people who were here, like the women, and they were going, what the, <laughs> they, they went like that. She really, my mom's the same way. They look way younger. So wait. She's turning 50. No way. Yes, by the time this airs, she'll be 50 in two weeks. Yes. Yeah. Wait, let's rewind. What happens during menopause that you have to go out the room? I said, put men on pause. I mean, you're done. And they have no interest in you whatsoever. Well, that's that happened after you put the ring on. I'm talking about what is it about her body? <laughs> <laughs> is she too hot? Is she too cold? Is she? Yeah, yeah. They get hot flashes. They got to put their head head in a freezer, and she, it's it, it's bad, man. It's a it's a hormonal thing. Wow. I found. By the way, I talked to a comic friend of mine who went through it. Uh -huh. She got me these hormones. I I got a, I got it too. I said I'll, I'll get it as, as well. So I got the. They were implanted. These hormone pellets. So I got my wife. She went with me. They take a not blood the, test. Not the steroid pellets. 
Because, you know, they do that too. No, no. These are natural hormones, you know, whatever you need, they give you. Right. They put it in, they right. incision. They I heard put it's inc- it. uncomfortable when you sit down. It, they well, put right it now ass. it is, yes. Right, yeah. And this is my third podcast today. <laughs> <laughs> They're like little rice pieces of rice. I think so, yeah. I think so. Oh, I didn't yeah, look. Didn't I didn't it. look. No, I turned around. But and it was you, funny. We ran into him at the fireworks. It was Tori Spelling. You know that? It was, yes. it was me, Tori Spelling, her husband, Dean. And it's, we ran into the guy who did, did it. it, right? Who And, we, and his family. Was, and they were a wonderful family. And I said, this is really weird because it was like days later. I said, it's really weird that the last person to touch my ass was you. That's hysterical. <laughs> so I have a friend. His wife got the pellets. Oh, and, did? Oh, the, the yes. hormones. Yeah. Hormones. And she said... Because she's been very active sexually now that she's had the pellets. I heard that, yes. She said, is this how you guys always feel? And he's like, yeah. She goes, you've definitely cheated on me. <laughs> Cause she's that was all, a trick. She's all over him now. Now, my, my friend Sarah, the one who recommended this place, she uh-huh. said, it's ridiculous. And she said they just broke up with her boyfriend, so she had nowhere to put this, this energy. I got friends that'll do it to her. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. She's a great comic, by the way. Yeah, Sarah Halstead, you know her? Mm-mm. Oh, she's great comic. She find, opens for me sometimes. I'll find somebody to do it to her. Oh, yes, there won't be a problem. She's beautiful, and she's lost weight, and she's got just all this, you know, step, you know, whatever wow. you call it. You know, so why did, she, why did she get the uh, Because injection. she was going through menopause, too. I mean, you know. Oh, she's older. She's 48. She's yeah, age, yeah, when they're around 48, it starts happening, 47, 48. And if you're listening out there, ladies, we're not being sexist. No. We're just being truthful. We're just telling because facts. Because we have to. This is what part of the show is, is right. to go a little deeper than the usual setup punchline and yes. all that kind of stuff. Because we really want to talk about the real things that, you know, move us, move us in different directions. And mm-hmm. that, that's what people aren't honest. And that's a one other thing I love about comedians is the honesty and the truth Right. We're curtain pullers. Curtain pullers. Which is why people are afraid of us, like the FCC and the cancel culture and the virtue signalers. They don't want us Mm-mm. to reveal this, what we see. It feels like there's, I don't know if he's opening, yeah, he's opening the door. At least he's making me a little bit more brave as Dave Chappelle. Oh. Like, yeah, he yeah. don't give up. Whoa, does not. And was He's great. the ultimate example. Let me tell you why. Yeah. Because he has one company Giving him millions and millions and millions of dollars, and they love him. So he doesn't care about having a Zoom with Disney or Universal or NBC the next day. He's like, y'all don't want to fuck with me because I said some yeah, shit about this yeah, group. Yeah. This company loves me. He's not getting canceled. He's not. And, he can't be. And all those other companies would love for him to come now. Now, let me ask you a question. If he was white, same, same rules apply? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. I might disagree with that. If he had, I'm going to tell you why. It's white people mostly running the company, right? Yep. Wouldn't you say that's true? Yes. So white the world, people. The world, yeah. Well, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. You want to be, yes, we could broaden it out to the world. Right. Therefore, if it was a white person, they'd be much quicker to cancel because they would look terrible if they canceled an African-American or a minority. But who's the They can- would look terrible. But it's not about the network doing the canceling. It's the people. It's social media that cancels. So if Craig Shoemaker was on Netflix making $50 million, you could say, fuck everybody else because this one company is giving me $50 million. You can't. It's I'm not saying. the people aren't doing it. It's the people protesting that caused the white people to say no to this. But they're not going to do it with him because then that would be racist. See what I'm saying? I the formula? Agree. I disagree. You, re- you really think if that was a-, a white comedian, I can probably come up with examples. They're much quicker to pull the trigger on somebody white because there's the reputation, well-earned, well-earned <laughs> yeah. of being oppressors. Possibly. And being the racist. But all, all I'm saying is in terms of – Having that one company that says we're going to stick by you no matter what, yes, that helps. Yes, it does. But you're saying that wouldn't happen if it was somebody white. No, not even a not a shot. No, Whitey doesn't stick up for Whitey. Not when it comes to money. If they if they're thinking, hey, we're going to protest Netflix and you listen to us because of this. Look, that's when, when racism occurs, it occurs against black people. It doesn't occur against white people. Although white people want to say that it does. Oh, I hate whiny white people, victims. I go out of my mind. I go out of my mind. I swear to God, Chris, I'm black. I swear to God. I mean, I know I'm 14%. Nobody knows that because right. my 23 me. But I, I am so freaking black. I only think black. Right. But blacks don't want me. <laughs> I have no tribe. 
I have no tribe. I told you about the golf. It's all blacks. They won't invite me to the. That's, you have never invited me to the black parties. I have, listen. The reason I don't, I don't invite anybody because I'm always invited. You're always I'm invited. I'm America's guest. Yeah, you. I was gonna. I was so is Hale, by the way. You guys yes. must have grew up in the same about, neighborhood. So you know, I'm in Spanish Hills, and I was at Mountain Gate, and I'm never there because I had an invite to Riv this morning. <laughs> you did not. I Today? canceled it for you. you did. Oh man, I, I am did. shocked by that. I swear to God, I had a 145 at fucking Riv. But I wasn't going to cancel because I already canceled uh, because I was supposed to be here earlier. Uh -huh. I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to do that to you. Okay, thank Riff. you for not doing that to uh, me. Bel Air last week, Lakeside twice last the week before. I'm, I'm, at the, I'm at pristine places. Why would I want to go lock myself up at <laughs> Woodland Hills Country Club? <laughs> I'm at Calabasas, not Woodland Hills. I love, no, I'm not. Okay. No, I wasn't dissing you. I love Woodland. I love oh, I Calabasas. You, I thought you were dissing no, me now. No, I'm saying I Your had a manager's meet, in my place. I had too. a meeting. <laughs> I had a meeting. Uh, I had actually, my friend turned 50. He had a shindig at uh, Woodland Hills. I went and performed there. And they're like, yo, you need to join here. I was like, yeah. And they gave me this hell of a deal. And I was like. Oh, no. Uh, I, I don't want to diss them, but that they have. Three holes that yes. shouldn't even be on a golf course. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, almost, they should have a dinosaur the, mouth. It's, uh, going, it's like, what's uh, the show that uh, Steph Curry has? <laughs> oh yeah, it should be Holy Moly. Holy that, that, <laughs> that, that that should be. But it. the fastest greens in the world. Ridiculous. It's, it's unfair. It's like, just, I even, it's just yeah, it's that's the only way. That's the only thing they can brag about. The greens. Brag? I mean, just about yeah. We have the fastest greens in the country. Yeah, if you're Usain Bolt, you can brag yeah, about them. Yeah. No, I'm about just saying that's the only greens, thing they got. Greens on a but golf the rest course. Of the, some of I know they were trying to offer me there, and you know, oh look at this. I'm going, give it to me. I might. Yes. What's your favorite golf courses in Southern California? Uh, Sherwood. I know. You with me on that? It's butter. It's something about it. Butter. I said to my friend, I go, you know, he's from Philadelphia. He's a broadcaster. I said, I always take the broadcasters from all the Philly teams, right. the Phillies, mm -hmm. Sixers, and. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I always take them golfing because they have a day off or whatever. And I said to them, this is a true story. I go, hey, man, there's that vestibule. You go from parking lot to right? And I said, you're about to take five steps into greatness. I know. One, two, three, four, five. I swear to you. I said greatness. Wayne Gretzky is sitting right there. <laughs> no fucking way. Listen, the temperature. I, said, I didn't mean it literally like right. the great one will be waiting for you, but that's who exactly. The temperature is. feels different at Temperature. Sherwood. It's it, the club. It's the, the dopest pro shop in the world. Did you ever have the caddy? Let me see if you know this trivia. There's a caddy there who's the son. Uh, let me answer it before you even talk. Okay, got it. Flip Wilson. Yes, Flip Wilson's son, who looks like him. Scary. Yes, yeah, scary. Yeah, he looks like Skip Wilson. And then That's he points Wilson. to the house where Lenny Dykstra used to live. Yes. In. He lives there because he has to guard it because Lenny sends people there late at night to steal the copper piping, <laughs> which used to be uh, Pete Sampras's house. Like, it's insane. This, and Wait. Lenny was really rich, yes. and then he went really poor. Yep. And uh, so he had to live in the house to guard against Flip did. Lenny's people. Yes, Flip Flip's Junior. kid. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so he's he's he's. A, I love Hollywood stuff like yeah, that. Let me tell you the funniest Hollywood story about it, Flip's son. Uh, about him? Yeah, he wanted me to give Kevin Hart his script about his dad. Okay. He wanted to do a movie. I told mm. Kevin. Kevin, this is how funny Kevin is. He goes, "You think I'm going to do the Flip Wilson story so everybody can find out that I really can't act? <laughs> Fuck you! Get that script out of my face." <laughs> Wait a minute now. I never even thought about that. It's a great story, the Flip great. Wilson Kevin story. Says, I'm not about to get that deep right now. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a I'm minute. I'm doing Jumanji right now. <laughs> <laughs> but wait a minute. But seriously, why can you not find someone else to do the? Or no, why he can't. can't I'm, Kevin Hart produce it? He could. That's a great idea. That's a fucking great I'm just telling you, what he, this is like 10 years ago when Flip he asked Flip Wilson, me. that's a, I mean, that's a legend no one knows about Martin, that should. Martin reminds me of Flip Wilson. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, he used to... Uh, Geraldine he used to dress yeah. as Geraldine, and then Shanae and yeah. look at the uh, yeah Mark. Martin did Shanae yeah. Are you? It does seem like there is a tribe. That's a bad word for it, but tribe yeah yeah it's better a, than gang. So continue. Yeah, that's true. Posse, <laughs> Posse. <laughs> Gibson. even worse. But no, he uh, said pack, pack. Yeah, we go with pack. No, no, no. Remember, Mel Gibson said. I oh. hope a pack of niggas rape you. No, remember? he did not say that. What? Remember? Oh, I don't remember that. Mel Gibson got in trouble because he was yelling at his wife about doing something. That's why you don't hear about Mel Gibson no more. 
I thought it was because he's uh, he went anti-Semitic. For the, he, yeah, he went for the yeah. He hated everybody. You don't go for the Jews because yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get away with a couple <laughs> you of get away with the N-words. one K and you're out of here, Playboy. <laughs> K, done, K done. equals strikeout. You do know that, right? <laughs> oh, done, 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 done. So, uh, so he, <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't realize it. So I, I hope can't use you get pack raped now. by a pack of neck. He said that. Oh, yes. man. that was the recording when he was freaking yes, out. Yes, yeah. I I didn't even get to that. Here's part. what's even funnier. What? So when his pub. Publicity team wanted to show that he wasn't like that. Are you ready for this? They would show him with black people. One of the things that they would show is me and him on vibe. No. <laughs> Swear to God. Oh, that's oh, that's hilarious. So he's, they go back to 97 to yes. show. Look how they, many black friends he had. Look, 97, he was hanging out with Chris Spencer. I, I, well, what about Danny Glover? That's the ultimate example. Yes, they probably thought that was working, but I'm his real friend. Oh my God! That's yeah. so you're so you're pal. Are you pals? With no, <laughs> I don't know that motherfucker. I, I I don't even know if it's. But you wonder if like, you wonder what that is. You know what I mean? Like him flipping out like that. Is he really that way? Here's what I was trying I was to figure out the other that. day. Does one n word or one racial blurb or whatever make you racist? I don't think so. The whole race, man. I'm love to talk to you about i mean the whole race even an f-bomb does that make me homophobic it's really because we grew up talking like that to our friends like oh that f-bomb you can't you say f-bomb and you'll be you'll be you'll be shopping it's up there it's up there it's yeah it might have surpassed n-word way past it (laughs) way past it are you crazy well i i think because uh I think because blacks need to be higher up yes and have more power it's something about cancel the two g's in the word that is so strong the guga, oh, and, oh, you're and, doing the two syllable. Yeah, the, the, the one, one's the, a little lighter, I guess. I'm just saying, <laughs> the f bomb. They the used N-bomb. to have in, in Barney's Beanery. You saw that, right? What? You've got to be kidding me! It was on the Matchbooks. What's it called? No f's allowed. You didn't know that? The one on Santa Monica. Barney's Beanery is famous for it. Gordon, am I right about that? Do you know this? Do you, know, do you not, know about Gordon's this? Gordon's not from here, huh? Gordon is from, well, he's from Ontario-ish. Yeah. Oh, that's not here? Yeah. But he's been to Barney's Bean. You know, Bar- do you know that story? He's my, probably not. Oh, he says, yes. You can come in, Gordon. Gordon, am I allowed to tell why I asked you? You, can say, you can say no. You can say no. Am I, allowed, am I allowed to say why I'm asking you this? Okay, I am allowed? So Gordon's gay, right? Uh-huh. And he knows the F word. What's Did the- you know about Barney's Beanery? Yeah, it's a famous story. It said it, it was on the matches and everywhere else. No F's allowed. And it was lasted until very recently. No right? foreigners I, allowed. <laughs> <laughs> no foreigners to the vagina. Right. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to yeah, edit, edit that too. Now, how did, how did that? I'm not editing shit. Oh, good. Nobody's after me. I'm, I love it. Nobody, I'm not on anybody's <laughs> radar like, anymore. I'm, West Lake, I'm OG. I'm OG. Nobody yes. cares about OGs anymore. So uh, were you really offended by it? I mean, is that is like a is that like a huge thing? And it bothered me to an extent. Yeah. I, I, I won't go oh, won't go there. So yeah, there you go. Now here's the thing about racism. But here's what's fucked what? up about that. What? It's on the most famous gay street in the world. I know. In the middle of the gayest area in the world. And that's what the the that's bar. That's like having a sign at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles saying "No niggas allowed." <laughs> <laughs> Am I right? You did have an A on the end of that N word, didn't I you? Always. Okay, good. Yeah, like when I talk about, I say cracker. Oh, the crackers, smart. the cracker. I used to do a joke. If I, I say cracker. I mean, I'm out. I had a joke. Uh, I, you know, these two white guys were saying saying it, and they realized. They had to stop saying it, but if they did say it, they would say it with the A because they realized the ER would end them in ER. <laughs> they would end up in ER. It's an old joke. Edit that out. It's, it's, it's <laughs> no old jokes. Edit them out. Yeah. That's the thing with podcasts. Edit that out. No, but the whole the reason you started talking about Pax Gang's uh, tribe was golf. You were talking well, about. Well, yeah. So what I'm saying is, I do believe that I don't get invited. Even to the golf hang that I arranged for Chris, we we argued about that on text message, which you are way wrong, by the way. Yeah. You're the only one that defends him on this. Right. 
So what happened was really quickly, I have a hang down the, the, this, this golf course. This wonderful woman hosts my friends, eight, of, eight at a time for free, even lunch sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so he scarfs my connection, and he goes there. He connects with her for free golf, and they don't invite me. Do we have callers? Callers? Can you <laughs> I call wish in? we did. There's no one that would defend except for you. That's it's it's in Philadelphia. That's an infomnia. They mm. talk about that in the in the Godfather. That's an infomnia. It's a no. You you do not do that. So for so anyway, when I'm watching the Instagrams, you know he's there with his little, you know you know here we are having a great time at Craig's golf course. He hasn't invited me either. Oh come on, he has too. I've invited you. With he hasn't him. invited me to that hang. Whatever that little group is, little ex NFLers. I haven't been. I don't play with them. You don't. No. Well, I noticed that they're all black. They're, I'm, I'm not invited to my own and thing. And I'm black and I'm not invited I, I don't either. know why you're not. Because I've invited you I with Chris. It might be an NFL thing. Uh, maybe, ah. we're not, maybe we're not fast enough to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to analyze this. But I also noticed that your, your pack. <laughs> I'm afraid to here's, say, here's I'm thing. afraid to say anything anymore. We have, this is horrible you know living like this. Golf? You have your group of guys, right? Yeah, who happen to be. And they all rotate yeah so my group of guys is usually flex alexander okay black uh buddy lewis black am i gonna get a white person james arsenal this? is there any white person in this no yeah see no mike sherman well, what's behind this mike sherman rondo barrio and uh anderson no i was naming the two whites oh you had two white Oh, well, Del Barrio, that's so you can get a free lesson. Oh. I know that action. Okay. Oh, so, that's how you scarf my Mike little Sherman, producing. That's how you scarf my. Case. That's how you scarf my producing gig. Yes. <laughs> on the on that golf show. Um, All of a sudden they go, you're out. He goes, oh, we can't afford you. I go, oh, I know Chris Spencer. Which golfing gig? That the, 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 the golfing guy? The, the television show. Yeah, oh, with my buddy the Australian. Yeah, I like him. Oh, yeah, he X'd me out. I, like, took over the whole show. He didn't like that either because I was trying to make him less oh, yeah. stiff. Yeah. That they, they didn't like, oh, you agree. I was trying to get him to be less stiff, and yeah, I had all these little funny things. I Do had you think to, Magic would have said, you know what, we need to get Michael Jordan over here. <laughs> Motherfucker, you're Michael Jordan of this talk show shit. You think you were going to make him look bad. Why would he put you on the show? No, not on the show. Oh, I was, I was his producer behind the scenes, telling them uh, I was instructing them here. This a bit will work. This bit, and it, by the way, they used all my bits, and then they go, "Oh, you're too expensive," and then they go, uh, "Then I find out, oh, I look into credits. Chris Spencer is now the producer. They gave me a hundred bucks, hundred, maybe. Oh, okay, yeah, no. And I like, thought to myself, was, I know Chris Spencer. He holds out for a lot of money. No, I, I still remember you holding a, out for more money than anyone else at the Canyon a, a Club on my Wednesday night. He gave me 100, 200 bucks. Oh. I, I did it for right. Ron. Oh, I did it for less than. I did it all for, right. I wanted Ron to look uh, good. Yeah, Ron is a great golf instructor. Yes. But you wanted free lessons, too. No, I already get free lessons. You do? Yeah. Man, we're always working the free, aren't Fuck we? Fuck yeah. That's all we do is work the free. Exactly. Did you grow up with money or not money no or money. in between? I wasn't broke, though. Wasn't. It was it's your, uh, the broke point. Here's what they call Inglewood, where I grew up. Inglewood, Inglewood yeah. is the hood where there was both parents in the home. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you're like a suburb of Compton. Is that yeah. what it'd be like? Well, you're like the suburbs. People move from people Compton from to Inglewood. Compton. When yes. people from Compton got When they want to move job, up into the suburbs Inglewood. where it's safer. And then Ingle, after Inglewood, then they started moving to the valley. Right. So, But I was there before the, the next movement. Well, I wanted to, yeah, I want to talk a little bit about race. It is so uncomfortable. And what my thing is, is like, it's about your intent. Absolutely. But you can't get inside someone's intent. And when people are trying to get inside of it, it's projection. It's their own stuff that they're trying to project onto you. You're very good at this. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and it drives me crazy because I'm like, you don't know me. But it's just so funny. It's just based on just the exterior. And I and don't get it. I don't get it. And we have been trained. Look, I was trained to be a racist. Really? F absolutely flat out. But not a mean racist. So let me ask you about this. <laughs> let me ask you. Let me ask <laughs> not you. a mean racist. That's the name of your next special. <laughs> <laughs> racist but not mean. No, just not but, a mean racist. Yes. Right. Not a mean racist. My grandmother, right? She. It's like... So what do you think about this? She doesn't know any better. And right. you're not going to change a grandmother. No. You know that. Sure. Right? It wasn't your grandmother the same the, the day you met her to the day she died? Yeah. Right? Pretty much so. Same person. Mm -hmm. Probably had some racial stuff. Right? 
Um, she grew up in Jamaica. Oh. So uh, it, it was probably classism more than racism. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's that. Yeah. So, well, the so way but maybe you're when trained, she got out here, I never really talked to her about it. The way you're trained, though, is the way you end up until you have a transformation. Right. I had a transformation. Right. But it wasn't from my parents no, or my, it was a my, my black, grandmother. A black girlfriend at Temple. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if that was the reason. Yeah. She called you black, Love Massa. And for, then you for, some reason, for some reason, black women like me. I don't get it. Because you're smooth. <laughs> Would you stop? You I don't know think, where you thought you think I am. you're called the love master. <laughs> I, I call myself the love master. Exactly. And it's a joke. You did something. No, it's a joke. One time I did the love master and this girl like was ready to sleep with me. And I came out of character. I'm, ah, and I, was, I came in five seconds. I feel so bad. For, I wanted to retry. She goes, no, I got to get back to my husband. So oh. I feel, to this day, I feel terrible that I was we no all, love master. We all have a couple of those. Oh, you huff, puff, boom, you're done. Yes. Oh, yeah. So that happened. And I was no love master. Right. Not smooth. You bust before the credits. But, but the, uh, <laughs> yes. Opening, opening, opening credits, credits. Not the closing yeah. credits. Right. Opening credits. Yes. The film wasn't even playing. Yet. Right. No. It wasn't bust. even in preview. You, you came before the trailers <laughs> finished. <laughs> I came while she was up getting popcorn. Yes. So... Yes, it was it was bad, but so my grandmother said the word right, like it. Would, but do you think that she was going? Oh, I want them killed. No. That's the thing. What's your thought on that? I mean, what do you think? Don't you think that those people exist too? That it's just it's just the, the brain is trained a certain way. It's just I, she, it's it's not. Hurt, there's hurt. no malice, is what I'm saying. Right. My grandmother didn't have malice, but she was. It's because she was afraid. She didn't know any better. Right. They would it's, walk it's, down it comes, the street. There's, there was certain people. There was an orphanage down the street from her. And there were some some black kids that lived uh, there, and she would look out the she would look out the window, and she just didn't know it, and she would just go, mm, you know, right. I can't say it, I literally can't say it. <laughs> no, no, not a shot. You gonna lose some followers? <laughs> <laughs> Even the attempt, I'll lose followers. Right, but um, but that's how she grew up, yeah. But I but she if you would have a conversation, she wasn't going. She was never harmed, right? And that's here's the thing is. I took a step back, and this is where the transformation took place. White people are in charge of the narrative. The whole voice is owned by, by white men. Mm -hmm. It's been for centuries. Mm -hmm. Own the voice, own the spin, everything. So what you're seeing on the news, they choose every single thing you see on the news. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see a white-collar crime. You won't see them going to jail. They're much worse. They're killers. Look how many deaths have happened from opioid addiction. Because they lied, right? Big Pharma lies. Do you see them going to jail? No. They, Absolutely But not. what you see on TV is somebody that robbed 7-Eleven. Yep. And you see mug shots. So, so that is ingrained in the white people. ounces of weed. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Bad, and that's bad, my bad. theory on that's exactly. So the racism, the reason it's systemic is because that's who's in charge of the narrative and the mm -hmm. voice. You're really good at this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be black. And this is something you never knew. The yeah. only person who ever loved me growing up was a, a black woman, Myrtle. Yeah. Myrtle. I mean, my mom worked. My dad went, so, my dad's a cult leader and went off. You're lying. No. no. Uh, he's got up to 14 women at, at one time. Anyway. So you have brothers and sisters you haven't met? I actually found one. One found me a few years ago. Please yeah. tell me his last name is Shoemaker. It's too. a she. It's a she. And she's, no, the, she didn't take his last name, but she was one of the, she was one one of the uh, the first of the cult. No escaped way. with her, basically not escaped, but get, went moved to states away. Oregon, and my no Michigan, uh -huh. and my I tried to find her at first because I knew she existed, and she found me a few years ago. She goes, "This is a great line." She goes, "Are you by any chance related to AJ Shoemaker of Pocono Adventures on Mules?" My dad ran mule rides to feed the poke to feed the women. Right, you know, the harem. He called it his harem, but anyway. That took me off the point. <laughs> so, so. so your dad was a pimp. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Why but, feel, that's why you feel. That's why you feel black. It's just in you. <laughs> and left when I was born. I mean, I've got, I've got all, all the know, traits, all the, all the check, check, check. <laughs> so Myrtle would come over and take care of me because my mom worked, and she very large. Fried chicken just taught me a whole other world. Roller derby. Wow. I mean, just heart filled Does she with have heart. Kids? Yes, and those were your friends too. Uh, no, no, that was that was a. She used to call me her white grandson, and then she would, she would like invite her friends over, her neighbors, and she, and I, this is the best part. Of, I loved her so much. She didn't have to talk. She talked in in hums and sounds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
I bet you can do those translations of what I just said. Absolutely. Mm, 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 mm. You better not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Taught me heart. That was a woman that taught me heart. So I resonate with the blacks that don't want me. <laughs> How do you do in black audiences? They don't want me. Oh, my God. Murder, right? Murder. Murder. I'd have a bit in my act about it. I see white people don't applaud and laugh like that. Sweating. I had a line, though, that I had to drop. What is it? Because oh, of the George Floyd thing. I, I imitate. I go, there's this guy in here. Oh, my God, you got to stop. I can't breathe. Oh, yeah, let's go. Take it out. Take that <laughs> shit out. You'll be canceled like my American Express. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to go, I'm sweating my ass off. Or right. I just make no, a Chris line. Rock said, what? black people laugh with their feet. Wow. Isn't that genius? Wow, I love that. we stomp. And stomp and, and get up. Yes. To high five someone You're across fool. the <laughs> Crack shoemaker, you stupid. <laughs> That's a compliment in our culture. I know. I remember, so stand-up wise, I was always going from room to room. I would go to, I would be at the improv, and then I would go down to the comedy act, and then I'd come back to the Laugh Factory, and then I would go to the Fun House on Crenshaw, and I used to uh, run around with Daryl Heath and Alex Thomas. Do you remember them? Alex Thomas, I know. Sure. Yeah, he's up in Sacramento so, now, right? No, he's here. I thought he was in Sacramento. Oh, no, he's still here. Okay. He's at Sherwood, as a matter of fact. Hmm. So. Uh, Alex Thomas is a member of Sherwood? Yes. I got to get to know him better. Yes, you do. So he hasn't invited me yet either. Uh, so we would go out and they would get all those kind of compliments. You a fool. You stupid. And then I would hear, nice set. I hated wow. fucking. I don't want no crip telling me nice set, right? <laughs> So I remember, I knew I had arrived when we were at a show in Inglewood, and after the show, this lady said, you are so simple. I was like, thank you so much. Simple. I needed to hear a negative. Negatives, you know, in our culture. It's a positive. It's a positive. Bad, stupid, yeah. fool, idiot, when you ignorant. Had, you had a show called Chocolate Sundays. Yes. Right? At the uh -huh. Laugh Factory. On Sundays, yep. Now, was it for primarily black comedians Basically, yeah. and black audience? Uh-huh. Yeah, you did invite me to that once. Yeah. But I don't like doing, I don't like going anywhere. I don't like going out at night. <laughs> you you actually go and play these I still these do clubs. spots. Because you you're, do spots. You're, you, see, I grew up differently in this comedy game. Yes. You were a real road warrior. Headliner, yes. Yes, across the for country. For years, yes. I kind of came in differently. I was opening yeah. for Damon and Chris Rock and, oh, wow. and, and Jeff Foxworthy. And so then I finally came back to the city. And I was doing, I was getting commercials, and I was like, I didn't want to go out as a middle and make $800 when I could make, you know, 15000 in this fucking commercial. So yeah. I didn't really do the circuit where I, I grew, as, I didn't go from opener to middle to headliner. And you didn't, you just wanted to stay in town because this I is guess. where your money was in television. I was acting. I wanted to be on the road, uh, but I just never, ever did like you guys did. You and never did. I did. I've done yeah. dates, 10 dates a year. 20 dates a year. Yeah, but not you've like never a, been known as that. No. As the, the headlining comic. And then the writing came, and so then I really didn't have to go. I'd like to switch places with you. I, Would yeah. you switch places with me? Right now? No, I don't mean like literally like oh. take my mic. Uh, would you? Would you? I would uh, love to have got. I'll describe. I'll describe my life. Give it to me. And you tell me if you would switch with this. Okay. It sounds like you would. So my life is three weekends a year. I mean, a year, three weekends a month right. when I'm on a roll, making really good money, you know, based on the draw, which I'm not as big a draw as We're I was. We're talking Friday, Saturday, Sunday? Or just yes, Friday, but Sunday. get in on a Thursday, do the press, do the whole deal. You know the deal. Mm -hmm. So that's gone on for decades. Like, that's, that's my life. So, which I did not have the hang where I see the Comedy Store documentary, you're in it. Mm hmm and I have a little bit of envy. I'm going, oh, you know, I know all these people, but I don't know them, know them like that. Right. We just had Eleanor Kerrigan. Right. She's a waitress there. She knows all these people who inspired her. I didn't have that. I could go in anytime I want. I'm on the wall, but I didn't have that. Right. So now I'm going to switch with you, and I will become the writer, the actor, and all of that. You want to make that switch? Well, you're still the writer and actor. Right? No, 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 no. I'm talking about primarily my income comes from that. I would. Uh, would you switch? I, I don't know. Because I, en I used to envy seeing people in the airport coming from gigs. 
You did? Oh, my God, yeah. Especially you. Now, the fact that you only had to do weekends is incredible. When I had to go, I was still the Wednesday through Sunday dude. And two, you know, that's, that's, that's why I hated it. Yeah, that's right. If you could yeah. go on the week, I mean, you got, you're, making, you're coming home with, some, with a nice chunk of change. Yeah. But what you should have done, possibly, is parlay what does Craig Ma- Shoemaker want to do while he's in Hollywood. What is the correct shoemaker show? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm guessing, did you or did you not do that? I had lots of I had deals and, you know, Were you pitching NBC. Them? Oh, so you did? So, okay. You, you, oh, I had a, my own deal at NBC. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so a that, lot of that stuff happened for Okay, me. so good. So, But I still would, like, covet the sitcom. That was when I would covet the sitcom when that was very popular in the 90s. Gotcha. They gave everybody a sitcom. Right. Okay, so came, you did all that. I came a little close. No, I didn't do it. I went back on the road and lost out on all those parts. Right. So I'm asking you, would you, I mean, you've got your house husbands, whatever the fuck that's called. Real husbands. <laughs> Real, but I, it, still, got, it seems you like got all, all those shows, you got it seems all this like stuff. all that stuff can still happen from being on the road. No, no, it's a choice. I'm asking you to make the Sophie's choice here. You got the road weekends making is probably more or right around the same or more than staying in town and getting this. Probably cake, that more. Cake. Maybe, you know, but just say it's around the same. Let's so just ask let's, let's, Craig Shoemaker, when it was hot, how much would you come home with on the weekend? 25000 Fucking great. Now, so, okay, so now you got that. Right. Now, do you want to switch places? I'm asking a serious question. I want to know, do you have that much envy of seeing a guy in the airport who's a weekend comic <laughs> coming back first class American right. Lounge and all that kind of stuff. For do my, you want that or do you want, I'm going to go be in a writer's room in Hollywood and be in Hollywood see, and be guest hard. starring and all I that hate, stuff. The fact that I write for everybody, yeah, I also hate it. Like the name of my special is going to be trying not to be a hater. <laughs> because you don't know how bad it is when you, I'm a, like if I didn't want to do stand up, I wanted to be a showrunner. My goal was to be, you know, uh, uh, Larry Day. Well, he's now, I can't even say showrunners now because they're getting shows. Yeah, you know, Larry I mean, Wilmore can't, can't say it about him. The, the, <laughs> that, so that's my, my goal is that. So if my goal was to uh, just be in the room, then it'd be okay. But when people are calling me saying, oh my God, that joke Jamie did last night was incredible. Or they joke. recognize my material from their, from their monologue. And they'll go, hey, he took your... St- no, they'll a, say, Chris, uh, you wrote that. Yeah. Like, my, my material is recognized. Is that good enough for you? It's not, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> right. It hurts. It does? It's like, it's like, I kind of like it now and then. No, if, you're, if, that's what you, if you didn't want to do stand-up, I want to be fucking hosting the Emmys. I want to be hosting the BET Awards. Mm. I want to be hosting the Oscars. Not writing for the guy... Hosting wow. the Oscars. Because you know you're equally, if not more talented. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree with you. you know I, mean? I told you, best talk show host, I I believe, I'd say Carson's probably better. Sure. You know. I don't know about better. <laughs> wow. Look at that kind of no, I, I really think. Let me brag for you, all right, I'm Chris? I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> I'm trying to go down the list. Yes. Now, now you're second to Carson. Jack Parr? No, better than him. Better than Jack Parr. By far. He wasn't funny. I mean, not that I ever followed right. Jack Parry's before yeah. our time, True. but what I've seen the clips no. on the kinescope. Leno? Leno? <laughs> Are you, you're not even serious. Letterman. No, you're, you're way better than Letterman. Arsenio. No, way better than Arsenio. I, I mean, I have my problems with all of them, if you want to hear what they are. Sure. I had no problems with you. Here's what you, here's what you have going for you. So I want, I, want you to go get a, I want you to go get another talk show. I do too. You are very smart. You listen. What'd you say? <laughs> really old joke. I can't even believe that this Shut great up. writer. I don't want you writing for Come me on, anymore. Come on, a comic. <laughs> <laughs> really great listener, attentive, present. None of those people that you just named are present. Think about it. Not one that you named is in their body. You are in your body. You're in your presence. Carson was absolutely in his body. You knew who he was. You, you know who you are. What about Kim? When I went on that oh, show, let's talk about you, the pres- when I went on that show with you. You looked me in the eye. You invited me like I was your friend. You had respect. Damn. And I remember it clearly, literally, vividly. It, I even remember Suli backstage. I remember the entire experience as one of my top experiences. And I've been on oodles of shows. Right. And I remember it as standing out because of those qualities. And that, to me, makes a good talk show. I'm a, I have the CDs. CDs, DVDs, whatever they are. I'm going to go look up. 
The one with uh, me on it? Yes. Yeah. Let me see if I can find you a copy. I probably had a little mullet. <laughs> <laughs> I think the Love Master movie was, yeah, I was promoting the Love Master movie. But you were like there and you were, you know, you didn't need the cue cards. You were there. And those other ones, they need, I'm not, I'm not bagging on right, any of the ones. ones that you named. Who's present now that you watch? Well, I, I, I uh, he comes up on Instagram. Uh, the monologues uh, I happen to crack up with Jimmy Kimmel. He's the best out there to me. Uh, you think so? By far. Uh, yeah, Fallon, Goofy. Um, you know, you know how he got discovered. By the way, uh, I don't know if you knew this, but I draw like really good audiences, and that word got out. Like Chris Rock, mm -hmm. he rehearsed his Oscars with my audience, with wow. the writers backstage, Shanley, Emmys. Shows up, you know, when I'm performing. Well, Fallon, his manager, came up in uh, at Caroline's in New York. She goes, oh, Jimmy Fallon. I said, yeah, I've heard of him, you know. And then she says, can he do a set because Saturday Night Live is here? And I will be honest with you. I literally said to myself, oh, wait till they see me. I literally said, I wasn't being a good guy. Right. I was going, wait till they see me. I said, sure, he can go on. And there were like 11 of them, I remember. And they were there to see him. And I go on stage. I go, hey, good say he did kill. And I look at 11 seats empty. They signed I them in the other room. God, I knew you were going to they say that. They signed them in the other room that night to Saturday Night Live, and that was wow. it. You know. And by the way, Chappelle opened for me when he was 14. Damn. I knew it. You know, a lot of the Judd Apatow used right. to, you know, open for me. A lot of these Whitney Cummings, I used to take her on the road. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I'm the only one that never hit on her. But anyway, <laughs> I told her I will now. You, know, you look great. <laughs> and my wife's in menopause. But. <laughs> <laughs> You've grown into yourself, but uh, but yeah, I mean, would you make that switch? Would you? I sacrificed being away, you know, going on auditions, staying hot because I got hot for a little while. I sacrificed that because I go, there's money on the road, right? What would you do? How many specials have you done? Specials, a few, you know, but doesn't matter. What does that matter? What does it matter no. today? No, I'm asking. Is your because I remember you retired for you did you pulled I tried a Jay, to retire. you pulled a Jay Z and retired for like. Well, I'm six glad months. you said Jay Z. Other people call me Barbara Streisand. Oh, that's. <laughs> I know when you told me, I laughed. Did you really? Yeah, this is what we do. Oh, I love that you said that because DL told me the same thing. He told me it's DL Hughley. He told me the same thing you did, and I'm going to look you in the eye and tell you I absolutely would retire tomorrow if I had a better. Business plan. <laughs> I, I uh, came back because of the money. Absolutely. And that's terrible. Right. Now, I'm killing it on stage and very, very good on stage, but I don't want to do it. Well, a few I, weeks ago, I did two shows in a night. I was done after the first because I do 90 out of minutes. Town? Yeah, out of town. And you know what I mean? It's just, yeah. it, I'm, okay. I'm over it. I wouldn't want to do it. All right. Oh, wow. I talked you out of it. Yes. <laughs> I talked him out of being jealous. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, once you said being 50 and on, on, on stage 90 minutes twice in a row, it's like, ugh. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, it just really, uh, it's like you just, I just, I'm backstage going, oh, I got to do this twice instead of going, I'm really looking for, now one show nights, that's exciting. Right, right. Uh, Thursday night, we had a lot of people who was in Raleigh. But then that second show, oh, man, you know. And you know what it's like. Now that's the one thing I don't envy with you is late night sets doing a like a quick quick set at the. Oh, I love it. You do? What? Just jump over the hill, do fifteen, and come back? Oh man, well you're over the hill. I'm. I'm no, I don't mean over the hill like yes. old. No, yeah, you you don't go as far as I do. I live out way out. You know, I've got my whole suburban. Yeah. You know, kids and the wife and the coaching, but you do all that too. I saw your kids. Yeah. Your kid is like amazing basketball oh, player. Yeah, I might have to go on Maury this week. You might what? <laughs> have to go on Maury Povich. <laughs> <laughs> Find out if he's related. Yeah, because this motherfucker is jumping out the gym. I'm like, I didn't, I wasn't able to do that. Oh, you're you don't have leaping. I have no ups. No, I could dunk. You can. I could dunk. He's a oh, dunker. You mean could pass tense? Yeah, you oh, can't dunk anymore. Donuts. Uh, slam a book closed. No, no, I'm 53. You so it stopped. The dunking stopped. My see, mine was never there. So. I touched. I, I tore my quadriceps <laughs> in '98, and it was, I mean, and I was never a dunker, but uh, I, no, I, I, no. I'm six two, barely touched the rim. So this is where I'm not from Ghana. Apparently, right, right. yes, I have no no ups. It's embarrassing. And my son is actually very angry with me because he he inherited the gene. He didn't get the fourteen percent. We can't. I can't jump over the Bible. <laughs> he didn't he didn't get it 
at all. Tall. He's tall too, right? No, not the not the little one. No, he's actually very very tiny, like mm. I was. Yes, but he's he rips on me now because of the things I I said. Yeah, but you got other things from me, you know, money. <laughs> but yeah, they're they're all get. I have no money left. I told you I didn't. I did not plan that retirement well. So you literally think it's in my in, in my blood, and so that's something. What are you driven by? What drives you to be on a stage? I want to do a special right now. Why? I'm going to keep going deeper yes, and let's deeper. Go. Okay. Uh, I don't let's want, go. I don't want. So right now I'm kind of known in smaller circles. Uh, let's just call it urban Hollywood as like. They think I'm the greatest writer in the world. Like all these young comedians think I'm the greatest writer in the world. And I don't want my tombstone to read that. Like I want to be known as one of the greatest comedians in the world. Not mm. just a, a comedian who wrote for other comedians. Like they sometimes they kind of compare me to Paul Mooney. Uh, God rest in, 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 in spirit. Wait, wait, uh, Paul Mooney though was known as. Uh, just because he wrote for he wrote for Pryor. Yeah, that got to be the tag. But, right. he, but people don't realize like a really great comic. Incredible comedian. Yeah. Right. But he never did a special. Come on. He did one late where he's sitting down and he's like, you know, uh, that was the Paul Mooney that we grew up with. And so I, I just want to I want to have a nice special that stands. I had a, I did a half hour for Showtime. Three people saw it and, and two of them were related to me. Right. And so I would like to have a nice hour that I can say. I'm, I'm, I'm going to appeal again. Why? Because um, I'm really good. No, no, no. 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 Why? What's compelling you to want that? Because I want people to say, my three favorite comics are Chappelle, Rock, and Spencer. Or but, Hart. But why do you want that? For my ego. There you go. That's what I wanted to know. Oh, but this is what, we're comedians. Everything is for ego. No, no, not anymore. Yes, absolutely. I, yes. I, I, this shirt I wore, I, 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 I'm waiting for somebody to compliment me. <laughs> <laughs> these shoes, I'm what? waiting for somebody to go, where'd you get those? Well, look at these, baby. See, I'm look just telling these, about, Look at these shoes. Right. But I didn't make them. You make your jokes. You make your routine. Yeah, but you I didn't chose your shoes. outfit. It doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. If I'm complimenting on men, it means nothing to me. There are certain compliments that do mean something to right. me. Like something that's connected. Right. Something that says, you helped me with something. You you know, I got flattery from, uh, for instance, Cat Williams. Uh -huh. I said, hey, I'm, I am almost. I didn't even get to Craig Shoemaker. Goes, I know who you are. He's made, you're a beast. You know, I used to watch you from the back of the room in Sacramento. I'm going, what, Cat Williams? I mean, what you know, like, and I've had people do that. Yes, everybody knows you. A few times, no, I, but I, in my everybody knows my you. insecurity is that they don't, and they don't, you know. So, whatever the case is, you gotta remember, but, people grew up on you. People grew up on me. Yeah, I people, know. I saw Gabrielle Sidibe at the Emmys, and she's like, "Oh my!" I was like, "How you doing?" My name is. <laughs> oh my God, Chris Spencer! I grew up. I was like, "Damn, how old am I?" <laughs> the shit that we the comics, all the comedians know us. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when we when I go out of town. I see all these comedians come out like roaches, and I'm like, you guys know me? And I, and it's not from stand-up necessarily, but from the little things that I've done, but they respect us. We're their elders. They call me. They we're call the, me. We're the elders. That's crazy. I get OG a lot now. I was just about to say that. What's I up, had, OG? I had somebody say, uh, yeah, somebody, they flat out said, hey, what's up, OG? And this girl, this other comic, I was shocked that she didn't know what it meant. And she turns me, this was pitiful. She goes, what does it mean? Old guy? Look at the hurt you just felt for me. <laughs> I got a double wait, breath. <laughs> what if it does mean that now? <laughs> no. I even think what about if that's that. what they're saying? That's terrible. No. What's up, OG? What's up, Unc? I'm like, me? Really? So oh, boomers bruff. That I don't want to hear a boomer. I've never heard that. What? It must be uh East Coast? No, white. Must Say be a white thing. They go, how do you? I had two people that left the show, they went, you know, and they were mad at me. They, they, they walked out in Chicago. Boomer. It's the worst thing you can say to people now. And I cannot believe you don't know this word. Does it, is it it's something? actually insulting me that you don't know the word because you've never been called a boomer. It was only once, but I have heard it floated around without other people. Boomer? A boomer from the baby boom. So you're saying you're old? They're saying you're old and you're, you know, tired yeah. and you're done. I've noticed this with age, man. I mean, I people really have a hard time with age. So they project and they just want you to yes. go away. And they disrespect. I had a guy out of nowhere for no reason on Instagram because you look like an old man's nutsack. <laughs> 
That was me burping, not in the mic. And I, I, wow. said, I, said, I was like, I said, first of all, how do you know what one looks like? <laughs> so I said, like, why would you even bother? It was on private message. That message DM'd me. you? DM'd me to tell me I look like an old man's nutsack. And, but I, I realized it's almost karmic because I felt that way with older people. Right. And remember how? But remember we how? But we weren't disrespectful. Like when they want to hit me, they say some old shit too. I don't know, but I think I was disrespectful. Oh, you're disrespectful. I remember Pat Cooper came around. Do you remember who that is? Yep. It's an old old comic. Yep. And he came around, and I'll never forget it. And I was like this young comic, and and he starts, you know, just spouting, you know, these kids with the four letter words. Why do they need to do that? You know, I'm, so sh I'm like, shut up, old man. I might have said, I might have, I might as yes. well have said boomer. You know what I mean? I was like, you know, what's this guy know? And now I'm that guy that you they're going, that shut up, old man. You know, and I get it. I right. get it. I mean, because I think in theory is we're afraid of our own death and our own old age, and we want to ignore it and make it go away. We By don't the want way, where did you get these fantastic shirts that don't wrinkle? I have a clothing sponsor that I will turn you on to. That, uh, that white one was crisp. <laughs> this one is crisp. Well, I, I make sure that. Uh, make sure no, that. but I've been watching that shirt all day. It hasn't wrinkled yet. <laughs> Yours isn't wrinkled either. And I'll, you have pecs, I have tits. It's a big difference. <laughs> yeah, I did push-ups right out front. Did you really? No. Yeah, I'm starting to. I'm, I've, I've got to work out. I work out once a year, January 2nd, when I join a new club. That's my birthday. Is it really? Yep. Oh, Caroline Ray would be all over that. She's Miss, Miss Astrology. Oh, yeah. We just I just did this thing yesterday. With all, we were at dinner. Right around the corner from here. Uh, and people were talking about, oh, yeah, all, all my three Scorpio friends are exactly alike and this and this. And I was like, it's all BS. I know. Because as soon as, it, as, soon as so it's not alike, they go, oh, you have a Libra rising. Uh, then they tell you. That <laughs> exactly. That's what I was trying to tell her. Yeah. Oh, then they, they, oh, that had to do with this and this. I said, no, you can't generalize yeah. like oh, that. Oh, you're, no you're a November Scorpio. That's why you're not like that. By they, the way, if it wasn't for Julius and Augustus Caesar who added two two months, July and August, we'd be in 10-month calendar anyway. We wouldn't even have those birth, birth yeah, signs. It's, it's the whole off. thing. By the way, people, if you are into birth signs and you're really passionate about it, I mean to offend you. Absolutely. Okay. This is intentional. Yes. We talk, about it, talk about intent. Two boomers dissing you right now. Two boomers. <laughs> I can't. I'm mad that you have not been called this. I'm going to send somebody into the audience. Send somebody. Just, just to. I they wanna, won't be black. Oh right, because that's yeah, it's, yeah. I don't understand. You, I don't know. I don't know any black people. Know. What's hey, the black callers, people? can you call in and see? Tell us if you know what a boomer is. What What's the black people diss? The the, the equivalent of that when they walk out of the so room, they're old, yelling at you. Old motherfucker. I don't know. Old motherfucker. That's they just flat out. <laughs> you know, old yeah, motherfucker. We don't. We don't hold our tongue and try not to cuss. <laughs> now you're you're. Series, your serious XM show mm -hmm. that you do with your wife. What is the show? It's what it, was it supposed to be? Because I heard a monologue. <laughs> <laughs> so it must I was have been so proud well, of my friend Chris. Well, here's the, here's the other thing. <laughs> I actually <laughs> literally thought, oh, he's not on today. No, <laughs> I thought literally, it was her show. literally. So that's her world. She loves politics. So when she starts to get into that, I, I literally will go to the bathroom and go make a sandwich and let her. You, oh, yeah. Don't tell her I said this. I'll never be on the show. I uh, want to be on the show, for God's sake. Okay. No, no. I, but I, I, it's, it's my turn. I let her go. Yeah. Like it's sometimes if you come on and me and you start talking comedy, she'll let us go. Do you comment, though, to her that on the air, do you say something about, you know, am I going to get a word in here? No, no. I, None of it, that? No, because I do get a word in when I want to, but sometimes I don't want to. Right. It's just not your topic. Not my topic. But she, she, I mean, go listen to her. She loves it. So that might have been about politics that it day. It was that definitely. I was definitely. Or, or some feminine something. <laughs> it's like, go. Just don't, you're not in on the feminine talk. No. Do you guys ever argue on the air? Yes. You do? Yeah. Is it real? Absolutely. Yeah? And I try to get him to keep it, but she's like, take... Our guys, Jeff, make sure you know that doesn't make air. I'm like, Jeff, keep it. People need to see what oh, we're Oh, you're really pre-recorded. Like. Yeah. That was the pre-recorded and they allowed her just to talk the whole time. <laughs> I'm yeah, just kidding. It. I'm totally I'm just giving you. Uh, so you edit that show. Do you have topics that you cover? Mm -hmm. Is this the same show? I saw it on Instagram. 
I see you first. Yes. Yep. That's it. Oh, that's and but it started as that. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. It started off. That's why you gave me the excuse. I said I want to do your show. Oh, I have to check with my serious my XM white yes. people. Yeah. Before on Instagram, who's it was making us. a decision? White people or black people? Black people. At serious? Yeah, and I'm serious. Oh. But you got to remember, it's also a combination with Kevin Hart's company, Laugh Out Loud Radio. Okay, so you so, have to check with them. Yeah. They give us a list, and we give them a list, and then we combine list. You know what? It, I, I just can't believe when you have all these goals, which is funny. You, you got it down to ego because it can't be based on the same thing. You're not trying to get laid like you were before. That's what got you into the business. That's when I stopped wanting to do comedy is because that goal left. Right. So now what? Uh, not going to get even with the girls that didn't go to the prom with me. No. Nope. That was a big motivation. You know, like, right. oh, I'll show them. Right. Did you ever have I'll show them? You ever have that from high school? No. No, people that beat you up? No? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're probably the guy that beat people up. No, not They're at all. They probably want I, revenge was, on you. <laughs> I was I was, I was, was Switzerland. Yeah? Are you, but Everybody loves me. Oh, good. Yeah. Boy, that kind of confidence. You punk, should have your own special. Punk, <laughs> punk rockers. I went to. I, I left Inglewood and moved to South Pasadena. So I speak. I I I know how to speak with the Pasadena whites. Pasadena. Well. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know yeah. how to speak. With I, I, the I know whites. to talk to the whites. So. Well, you don't. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. You don't have. What's the word for it? The, the you know the slang street. Street. Yeah. You know, you don't have much of a street thing going. Mm -hmm. Now, do people who are street? Relate to you? They love me, too. They love you, too? Yeah. This is making me sick. You, you, I, I, did you know, I might as well be interviewing Seinfeld. No, <laughs> no pain. To, I used to have no a pain. You know, I used to do the Savoy in Inglewood, and when I say uh, half the crowd had two strikes, <laughs> <laughs> that's so fucked up. <laughs> but it was a very mixed crowd of from lawyers, judges, policemen, to criminals, to, you know, uh, white and blue-collar workers. It was a very, very mixed audience, and... Uh, I'm from there, so I know how to. Uh, I, I speak their language. That's yeah. our, that's my language. Both I can speak both languages, yeah. and that was the one thing that Damon Wayans taught me. He was make sure you do both rooms, learn to write yes. in the white room and perform in the black room. Wow, it's good advice. And so I made sure he's then, done that. He's yes. a crossover. And my whole goal was to make sure, like a lot of black comedians. Don't do well in white rooms because they only because they only do black rooms, and then a lot of black comedians that only do white rooms don't do well in black rooms because they don't know how to speak both. Mm. So, and and then what you see is you see the black comedian who only does white rooms go into the black room and try to be extra black sometimes, and it's not authentic. Yeah, I and even see found through myself see through that. Yeah, cussing a little bit more just to make sure motherfuckers knew that I wasn't no bitch ass comic. So I'm, and then I listen to my set. I'm like, why am I cussing so much? Wow. You know what I mean? And then I would so go to the right room. you're not being authentic. And I will go to the right room and try to enunciate more. So I was like, let me do both rooms so I can eventually just be Chris Spencer. Like, there might be some different references. Like, I might say, you know, Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles in one room. And I might say, I might hear, I might say Rodeo here and Rodeo over here. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's interesting. And there are a few that have made that crossover. Yes, um, Chris Rock, Chris, Kevin, Dave, Cedric, uh, all the big Steve. I mean, you know, Steve actually started off in the white rooms. Steve was a very mainstream, Harvey? Kind of, yeah, mainstream headliner for years before right. his fame. Straight on, straight on, yeah. And he still is. Yeah, he got fucking talk shows with little kids doing backflips and shit. Yeah, he's. I would say he's yeah. across a Family Feud. Yeah, he knows. He knows how to. He knows how to do it. Yes. But what do you think he thinks? If I asked him for an exchange of careers. No, because he did what you did and what I did. and But he didn't do the writing. He was a road warrior. He oh, did what, he was? What? Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, four weekends. Like in the 80s? 90s. 90s. Steve Harvey on the road. Oh, my God. See, yeah. I can't even remember that because he's so long in the success. Right. No, radio Steve. is how he started. No, radio was after. He did the Steve Harvey show, which was across the street from Vibe, across uh -huh. the hall. Yeah, he used to be our guest whenever whenever somebody was missing. I knock on his door, yo man. Uh, uh, Halle Berry's not gonna make it. Uh, we, me and Cedric will be there at three, whatever it was, and they would come on and fucking be our guest. Were you ever intimidated by a guest when you when you you were going? We got who? Like somebody who's like your 
idol or you're somebody just I was really mad when we got Denzel and Spike and we sent Suli to go interview him. What are you talking about? Was it no? They were they were via satellite or whatever it was back then. Oh, and I was I was no. mad that I wasn't there with them. Oh no! The funniest story ever. But you didn't meet them. No, I was pissed. But you've eventually met Denzel. You yeah, yeah, yeah. I used yeah. to hoop with Denzel at the Hollywood Wide. Oh, you hooped with the Denzel yeah. at the yeah, Hollywood Wide. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was hooping with him when he when we interviewed him. I was like, I know the motherfucker right there. A lot of great basketball player comedians. Yeah. Oh, I played against you in or, that Y League. Yes. I played against you. That's yes. right. And John Campanera. <laughs> That's right. Yes. He's actually a good ball player. Yes. Yes. He's very good. Um, I can still remember the ones I like. I'm Philly. I like take it to the whole heart. I don't right. like, ju- I don't like jump shooter uh, Jackson right, Perdue. Well, you know, Jackson, I just saw him. From the, from the three. I saw him at Paul Mooney's funeral. He goes, you remember me? I said, motherfucker, because you finally cut your hair, you think you look different? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he finally cut that hair? Yes. Yeah, but there are some who take it. Uh, Al LaBelle took it hard to the whole. I mean, you know. Al LaBelle. Well, I just saw his name. He's doing something. Right? Mm-hmm. I haven't heard I heard about him in years. But there's some basketball players. Some, well, you know some why? Comedian basketball. West what Coast, is the reason we, on this? We had nets. So <laughs> <laughs> we wanted to hear swish. <laughs> you yeah, guys, you're a three guy. You guys go to the racks because you got to make sure that motherfucker <laughs> goes in. There's nothing special about it. We have to see it. it go in yeah. because it's an illusion it's from a, too yeah, far. Exactly. Wow, I never thought about that. We, we I can't stand you guys. Swish. I was going to say you people, but it would sound like yeah. racist. But Remember, I'm talking uh, about three people. Ross Perot. The, shoot, the, the, the shooters. I, I never liked the shooters. Yes. The three people that go me. out. The Beverly Hills ball. Yes. I'm in there mucking it up. Yes. Rodman was my idol. Yes. That's how I play. No nets. <laughs> so we, our team was nuts. We, we, got, we got tossed from the league for a, for a day for fighting. Who was your team? You wouldn't know any of them. They were, they were all. I didn't. I wasn't on the comic team. Again, I was an outcast. Right. I think you were on a comic team, weren't you? No, I was with guys who are naturally played at the Y. So a lot of actors. in that league. Yeah. Oh, you were with the actors. Yeah. Then there was a few comic. There were two comic teams. Do you remember? What's that guy, Tim? He, Tim Witherspoon. Tim. No, no, no. White guy, skinny white guy. Oh, geez, what was his name? He he was actually took it to the whole hard. Um, Oh, you don't remember? What was this really white guy? Like skinny. And what was his game like? Little girl, curly hair. I, was, <laughs> I didn't say girly. But uh, he was a, a guard, skinny, small. But he, he surprised Can't me. I remember. Like Midwest look. You know who else used to play? Who? What's the kid's name? He became a writer. Uh, uh, Tom Arnold was married to his sister. Tom Arnold was married to his sister? Yep, after Roseanne. Oh, he wrote like a base. He wrote a lot of sports movies. Yes, he's my Facebook friend. Yeah, not Campanella, but something like that. Yes. Why, why am I blanking on his name? He used name to be to- a member at Braemar too. I used to see him up, but he would go up there to write. He wouldn't even play golf. Pete, what's his name? No, it's not his name. It's I'm, I'm his freaking Facebook friend. It's uh-huh. like Carpanera, yes. Campanella. It's from Detroit. Yes, he wrote Mister Detroit there or one of go. those movies. Yep, yep, yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so. Are you a member of a club, or are you just America's guest? Spanish guests? Hills. You're a member there? Yeah. Oh, you did a trade from your, your For guy. For jokes. Yeah, your, your guy there. Bill Hammond. Yes. 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 So I yeah. had my one bad set of my life in front of him. Where was it? It was at Spanish Hills. It was a, it was a benefit. And you know I usually kill. Yeah. But he doesn't know that. They're so fucking stiff. Oh, no, this was a benefit. It was worse. Oh. It was really were you, bad. Were you edgy? No, it was, it was, there was, the setup was wrong, and I was trying to... What one would call controlling, I was trying to be a professional. I got you. But other people, like a Bill, would right. say, get out of my way. I know what I'm doing. But, he, he but, but by the way, didn't know what he was doing. You know, you know comedy. We want it set up. Exactly. Give me an intro yes. so they get the audience calmed yes. down. They're do, do bidding and auctioning and everything else. I need it, and it was not happening. And he had no interest in shifting it, and I bombed. And I had fans there. It's embarrassing when the oh, wait, do you see him? <laughs> wow. I could still remember that. Because I don't have many bombs. Mm. But that one I remember clearly. So he hasn't had me back since. <laughs> we'll have you back. Oh, jeez. We'll have you back. Are you the co-booker there? Yeah. For Spanish Hills? Yeah. I saw him wandering around Calabasas. I bet she wants my gig over there. <laughs> Watch him. Oh, I know. It's going to happen. <laughs> hey, man, we got it. What's your social media? The real Chris Spencer on Instagram. That's not bad. Facebook, I guess, is Chris Spencer. And then for your older fans, the boomers, 
Uh, MySpace, Chris Spencer. No, I thought you were going to go Twitter. Are oh, you on Twitter? Twitter. I barely, you know, I realized that like, my numbers weren't going up. So, uh, no, I don't tweet as much. I have more fun on there. Right, because you like to banter. Like my wife, you guys like to talk back to people. <laughs> I want to post some cute shit of me fucking uh, uh, getting a birdie and, 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 uh, and a cute outfit, and that's it. I don't feel like arguing with people about social injustice. Let's have one photo on there where I am with the black people, okay? Done. I want to be with my people. Done. All right. Well, you know what? JP used to bring the blacks up there. We used to, we used to have a, Monday, a Friday game at 8 a.m. at Calabasas. Another, and I, another one I don't I was know what happened. Too. All right, man. Real pleasure, as always. And uh, listen, everyone, follow Chris Spencer and follow him because you're the first to hear that his law of attraction, what he's putting out to the universe, is he's going to have a special. Yes, because of my ego. Exactly. Because of his, I wasn't going to say that. I'm tired of being the other Chris. He's tired of being the writer, the guy from the back where people are going, yeah. oh, I recognize that joke. That was a Chris Spencer. He's tired of that. He wants to have his own material, which yes. he is a brilliant comic, and he should have his own. So watch for that. Because all I'm trying to say to you is find more laughter in your life. This is what will lift you up. Get away from the news. Get away from the darkness. It's all about fear. That's how they lure you. Then they sell you the stuff that, you know, the drugs to fix the anxiety that yeah. they just gave you from the fear. That's how the whole cycle works. This is an interrupter. That's what we're doing. We're disrupting by having this show. So support the show. Facebook, you know, whatever you, you, know, you tag us, all the crap you need to right. do. I'm old school. I'm a boomer. I don't know what that is. Boomer. We used to put. By posters. the way, folks, he did all of that off the top of his head. We, we, He's really good at this. We, we used to we used to put posters on a telephone pole. I don't even think they have telephone poles wow, anymore. Wow, remember that? Are there telephone poles? We staple them on the telephone. That was our promotion. Right, and remember you you would, you would take the little <laughs> call this number. <laughs> <laughs> it was like you, a little piece of yes. paper. Yeah, people can't see you doing that. By the way, yeah, that's how we did it. So take a little piece of paper and pass it around and tell people about this show, yeah. which is an alternative to what they feed you. We have a new diet here, okay? That's what we're feeding you, and we hope you enjoyed it. So just remember these words and lighten the fuck up, would you? Woo. <laughs> Bye, y'all.